When people lose their capacity of smelling, it is often experienced as something really dramatic. Of course, any loss of one of our senses is strangely handicapping and can make us feel to be another person, to have lost part of our being human. In the case of losing our olfactive capacity, we are deprived of that one sense which is the oldest in our history of evolution. Smelling is beyond time, and often also beyond space. Certain animals, especially certain fish, can smell things from miles away. Smelling for us humans is pleasure, a guiding agency, so to say, to help us decide what is good or not good for us, also particularly what to approach or not approach, what to eat or not to eat, of course, because taste and smell are intimately linked together. And not to forget, most of our taste pleasure comes from smell pleasure. When we age, it is often part of the deal that our sense organs slowly, sometimes also suddenly, deteriorate. It is as if the mind-body programming of the life of a person is set in a way that the withdrawal of the sense capacities has to happen in order to signal to us that we have to focus more on our inner worlds instead of getting lost in the attractions of the outer delusions, the maya, as the ancient seers of the wisdom of humanity would say. There is definitely something true in this, but anosmia, or total loss of smell, is something else. A certain preordained loss of sensory sharpness, as it is normal with age, and not always, and not with all senses at once, has nothing to do with anosmia. But it is also interesting to know that the sense of smell is particularly delicate in terms of its interior functioning inside our system. I've asked myself why, and why with age so many elderly people are affected. Research shows it. Age-related alterations in the ability to smell are well documented. For example, more than three-fourths of individuals over the age of 80 have major difficulties detecting and identifying odors. This is a quote from the Annals of the New York Academy of Science in 1991. On the other side, if age is often linked to the loss of smell, isn't it interesting to see that the beginning of life, at least for us humans, is linked to the sense of smell too? The female ovum before fertilization emits the odor profile of the beautiful flower of lily of the valley in order to attract the male sperms, as research scientist Professor Hans Hutt from Bochum University in Germany has proven. One should see these guys in a fiction video how they speed up their track in order to get to their fragrant goal. So then, life starts with smell and it ends with a loss of smell? Can we say that? Well, I do not think so. Because the astral world, which receives us when we leave the body, is full of sense impressions, as confirmed by the yogic masters and by those who had life after death experiences. Another aspect seen from the point of view of Ayurveda is that the sense of smell is linked to the earth element. Ayurveda teaches us that each of our five senses is connected to one of the five elements in nature. That means smell is linked to earth, taste is linked to water, sight is linked to fire, touch is linked to air, and hearing is linked to space or to ether. So then losing our sense of smell, even gradually, while we are still embodied, means we are giving up our connection with the densest element, which is Earth. We are starting to lose our gravitational basis, our sitting, our groundedness. 
which means also to some degree our habitual way to feel safe. This has also to do with getting more and more dominated by what Ayurveda calls the Vata Dosha, which is linked to the air and space element. This is totally normal with age, but if Vata is too strong in domination, it makes us easily too airy, too spacey, too much prone to nervousness, restlessness, anxieties. But uh, thinking that being grounded in our body is the only way may also be an illusion. Of course, we cannot in reality forever be grounded in our body and its gravitational heaviness. But to stay in our body and on earth, we can say we need our earthbound nose and why not at the same time smell the heavenly sense of essential oils and all the flowers and secrets that the earth graciously gives us. Back to the connection of smell and age. If we lose our olfactory capacity too early, we should cater for getting it back as soon as possible. It means that we have to take care of our health, our lifestyle, our social environment, our diet, our thoughts and emotions, our spirit. What is also clear in the meantime is the fact that Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease and other degenerative diseases are all signaled by the loss of smell. Even our new recent plague, the COVID pandemic, has a very specific marker, the loss of olfactive capacity. But it can also be that certain genetic dispositions inhibit olfactive performance. Also possible inhibitors of smell perceptions can be traumatic experiences and even, as we know, catching cold, sinus infections, etc. The worst of all this lack of smell perception is that people tend to lose their joy of life. Anosmia patients show tendencies of depression, loss of inner drive, of connectedness, connectedness with the world and the social environment. Is that surprising? Okay then, why not try and boost the loss of sense of smell with those agents on planet Earth, which are the age-old cosmic light perfumers, the natural bliss givers par excellence? Why not shower the nose with the joy of natural fragrances, through deep olfactive breathing for example, with a powerful sniff-in therapy, via the help of certain essential oils, which have a strong penetration factor and which the brain cannot refuse. Not even a brain in a give-up mood. Or even inhale through the lungs alternatingly with the nose and see what happens. Why not get away for a moment from the stress pollution circus of our modern societies and practice Shinrin Yuku, for example, the Japanese forest bathing, where patients are led for days into the fresh conifer forests as an olfactive all-round breathing therapy helpful for so many elements. Guido Massé says it here very beautifully. If withdrawing the sense of smell leads to depression, fear and apathy, then perhaps the gradual withdrawal of plant-based aromatics from our culture is also contributing to a general malaise, poor attention span and dark moods. Perhaps aromatics spark the spirit and a soul based in scent can actually become immortal, fly free and be at peace. End of quote. Yes, we can. Experiences with essential oils prove that we are able to overcome a period of anosmia by just finding the right oil in the right moment. Our dear friend Eva Buzas in Spain sent me this testimonial not long ago. Quote, I wanted to tell you my experience with loss of smell cases. It has been incredible. We have a pharmaceutical company nearby who created a kind of anosmia kit with rose. A synthetic one, of course, with clove, lemon and eucalyptus. Very good idea, by the way. 
I don't know if it's working or not, but in our case, in the Oshadi case, our clients are getting completely recovered from total or acute anosmia or hyposmia after COVID in one or one and a half months. Probably you had those experiences too. We just told them to inhale your vital boost synergies, the new ones. I have to study more and more and I will write an article about this. It is a subject that I am passionate about. Anyway, we are thinking about offering customers a kind of Anosmia Real Aroma Kit with lemon essential oil and your synergies Pure Bliss and Vital Boost for olfactory treatments to smell during the day. There's one side effect. They can no longer smell synthetic fragrances. So funny. That's something really amazing. The purest aromatherapy increases their inner intelligence and alertness. End of quote. Or this experience here from the Like-Minded Mamas website. I used the eucalyptus oil for my allergies by inhaling for only three days. The results were remarkable. Not only did it stop my allergy problem, my sense of smell has returned after 32 years. I can walk in the yard now and actually smell the different flowers and plants. I can smell the different crops and pesticides even. It is amazing. And here, from an Oshadi customer who wrote this to a dear friend in UK. Hi Jonathan, just thought I would share this story with you as it just happened during one of my massages last Monday. I sent this to my aromatherapy clients. The blend I used contains wintergreen, peppermint, oregano, eucalyptus globulus, elemi, vetiver root, lemongrass and thyme in almond base, all of which have strong aroma intensity. I wanted to share this story with all of you as I had a miracle happen in my massage practice. Last Saturday I had a long hauler, a woman who suffered from COVID back in January but was still having pain and inflammation in her joints. After the massage I passed her in the lounge and she yelled out to me, I can smell. I thought she was saying she could smell me because of the oils and she again said, no I can smell. I haven't been able to smell for six months. Your massage was a miracle. After her roommate came out of the shower, she could smell her coconut bath soap. She had no sense of smell for six months since having COVID. The scent of the oils go directly to the limbic region of the brain and I believe it triggered her smell sensory area to function again. Overwhelmed with joy, that my work helps someone in such a profound way." End of quote. And last not least, Eliane Zimmermann with this recommendation here for our COVID anosmia crisis. Quote, if you suffer from anosmia because of an unknown cause or if COVID-19 is the culprit, the scent of roses, lemon scent, eucalyptus scent and clove scent can be used for daily scent training. Intense smelling things from everyday life, such as vinegar, a formerly familiar perfume, turpentine, etc., can also be used for practice. A strong feeling of cooling can be triggered with menthol or peppermint oil. Every COVID-19 patient with odor and taste disorders should train in this way, especially if the complaints persist over a more extended period of time." End of quote. And she continues pointing out here, Professor Hummel explains how to do it. The patients are to smell four different scents for 30 seconds each morning and evening. They should carry out this training consistently over at least four months, but in some cases also up to nine months. The smells can be chosen individually. It is only important that the smells are strong and one of the four scents still triggers a feeling like a tingling 
stinging or cooling sensation. Terrific aroma sticks for self-filling are available in many places nowadays, made of plastic and very chic in glass and metal in many colors. They can help with recovering your sense of smell. Patients who had COVID-19 can design their own olfactory training with natural organic scents. I recommend the following essential oils. Sweet basil, clove, peppermint, eucalyptus globulus, lemon, bergamot, rose geranium or rose, rose oil and vanilla. End of quote. Smell is a potent wizard that transports us across the thousand miles all the years we have lived, said Helen Keller once, a famous deaf-blind American writer and political activist. And she must have literally dwelled in the sense of smell with all her enormous sensory handicaps. So then, what is this secret link of our life of our memory, of our emotions, of our brain. With smelling, with olfactive performance or negative, with diseases like Alzheimer or Parkinson's, all the years we have lived, says Helen Keller here, above referring precisely to the memory side of our sense of smell. The secret link of olfaction is definitely on the level of the soul, or Atma, where the real sensory impressions are processed anyway and also memory. Definitely, this is not a mere biochemical level as such. If elderly people tend to lose their sense of smell and certain diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, COVID, etc. trigger this loss, again we have to go deeper into our understanding and try to find out what can assist us best in regaining our ground in the midst of this unearthing of our sense of smell through anosmia. Aromas are the perfumes of the soul, says famous French aromatherapist and medical doctor Jean-Pierre Willem in his book Alzheimer, the Disease Unraveled, the perfume of the soul, and he describes the nose as the therapist of memory. This is an amazing statement. Alzheimer's disease is not only connected to a loss of smell, but also to a loss of memory. And smelling essential oils and natural aromas triggers certain aspects in our brain, especially in the limbic system, and especially in the amygdala, our anxiety switch, which is also our memory and our trauma center. The limbic system is definitely involved in all our psycho-emotional problems. And the amygdala is particularly linked to the sense of smell, as research a few decades ago have already shown. Our sense of smell is located in the catacombs, the most primitive area of the brain, and is extremely powerful, writes Mehmet Oz, MD and cardiac surgeon, director of the Cardiovascular Institute at the Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center in New York. And he continues, Smell can produce all sorts of physical reactions, ranging from nausea to napping. The amygdala, the brain's emotional center, is located in the limbic system and is directly connected to the olfactory bulb. Rage and fear are processed in the amygdala and both contribute to heart disease also. Our studies at Columbia have found the diluted essential oils rubbed on the feet affected some volunteers' automatic nervous system within minutes. End of quote. This confirms, by applying certain frequencies which are soul-connected like essential oils, we can access information deeply engraved in our subconscious memory bank, release blocked emotions, and even, as we have seen, influence our smell perception, through which we are able to light up the inner bulb again. So, the aromas and the beautiful fragrances are nature's most powerful seducers. One cannot withstand their magnetism, their energy, 
their subconscious tricks. And that is how the messages of nature for healing sneak in. You maybe just want to smell something, maybe nice, maybe interesting, and woof, a whiff of something else shows up to you. Like this man on one of our presentations in South India during an Ayurveda retreat not long ago. I passed a small bottle of agarwood, oud, around, and what happened? Within a few seconds, with a little bottle under his nose, he burst into tears and could not stop. After a while, he explained that the oil had triggered a very special memory deep in his consciousness. I remember, says Arjuna to God Krishna, who is guiding him to enlightenment on the battlefield of Kurukshetra in the end of the famous Bhagavad Gita. Is not one of the best Alzheimer's therapies based on memory training? So then, let us learn to remember, and particularly remember the essence of our existence. And through the divine gift of the plant kingdom, experience the blessings of the aromatic plants and their essential oils, which have the power to reach deep into our soul level, where all memories between heaven and earth are available.